Hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me. We're, I, I, I'm, I was telling everyone that was up here, I don't really willing believe that you all willingly came here to listen to the BRM. It is okay to put your heads down, take a nap. Post lunch sleep is kind of kicking right now. So, at any rate, for those of you that really do want to hear stuff, again, um, please don't get your expectations up too much. The BRM only gets so exciting. But today we're going to be talking specifically about assessing AI risk in a vendor setting. <clears throat> so, before we start, uh, again, apologies, you're going to hear some really bad takes of mine. Um, you're, you're free to leave whenever, it won't hurt my feelings. None of this is meant to be advice, right? We're sharing thoughts, ideas, experiences, that's it. Uh, if you say, I advise you to do something, I will fight it to the nail. So let's just avoid that. I'm also not an AI expert. Um, I think anyone that claims to be an AI expert is either really, really, really smart or lying. And I'd like to be neither because I know I'm not smart and I don't like lying. So not an AI expert. This is just kind of stuff that we found in the last year with AI being the buzzword and everyone Kind of being in a position where they have to learn about it. So I'm also going to do a fun thing. Um, I don't hear or see super well, but I also think that most of the people in here are have something really great to contribute. I've seen it in a lot of different conference talks throughout the last few years, and I'd like to get those shared now. So if I need to skip through my presentation, I would much rather hear what you have to hear, what you've seen, what you've done. I think that's going to be a lot better than the sweet memes that I have added in here. So, um, I'm really not that interesting. I've done a bunch of different stuff. This is kind of the first home in which I've been able to do something that I think I don't entirely suck at. I wanted to be a band teacher. I'm most definitely not a teacher. I think that was a great financial decision at the very least. Um, I am the reigning Kahoot champion. My company doesn't mean much, not a lot of people, uh, but I think it's fun. So, and I work at Wistic, which is a, uh, a we're, we're a, I was gonna say we're a small company. Like every other company recently, we've changed sizes recently. Um, the, the, the chuckles have it. Yes, um, but it, we're, we're, we're a company of a bunch of scrappy folks doing a bunch of different stuff. Keyword, we wear a bunch of different hats out in Utah, south of Salt Lake City. Um, but we're out on a mission to pretty much make vendorous management suck less, put it bluntly. Um, and I think that between sending questionnaires manually through email, over the course of six months, cutting that down to our general, you can have it done same day, maybe next day, uh, is, has been a net good. So that is my sales pitch for Wistic. I don't, I don't believe in selling during this. So what we're not going to be talking about, in other words, setting realistic expectations, right? You're not going to walk away from here being AI pros because I'm not an AI pro or an expert or really good at it at all. Um, but we are definitely going to be talking about it. I'm also not going to be able to teach you in teach, talk to you in 20, 25 minutes about how to completely de-risk AI use with your vendors. That is, that, that's a book uh, and, and right, how fast technology moves. That's not something that we can reasonably do, but we can touch on the topic. And like I said, we can share the ideas, the experiences and try and make it a little bit better. And we just do that as often as we can. I'm also not gonna teach you how to boss your vendors around to make them do security your way, right? Um, this happens, right? I think we've been on both sides in some capacity and I just gotta say it doesn't work. So just, one, just wanted to bring that up in case you thought that I was gonna give you some sweet tips and tricks to uh, get a squeaky clean assessment on your next vendor review. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how to do that. That's, that, that's it's just not feasible. So what we are gonna talk about though is what AI vendorist is. Um, right, I think that definitions are important, so we're going to cover that. We're going to cover what AI vendorist is and is not from a high level. We're going to look at some things that m will be helpful to avoid, make the process a little bit painful as you either review vendors that use AI more actively, right, it's not going away, or as you look to integrate AI into your product, how to maybe position yourself a little bit better so that when people start coming to assess you, you can react with a little bit more foresight um, as those come because it comes with, it comes with its own suite of challenges which is I'd say it's fun but like I said I'm not a liar so it's, it's not fun but it's gonna happen anyways and we're also gonna look at some resources to get you started as well I told you I'm not gonna sell I don't think I mentioned my company doing which does BRM software counts as selling so just again heads up and like I said some terrible memes but 
I think you have to. All right, okay. I'm going to take a quick second before we really dive in. We, we work with a lot of really serious stuff, right? Where one of the last presentations was how do we make our metrics suck less and the seriousness that comes with that. And I think that's really important, especially when we come to conferences like this. But I think that if we're always in a mode of shoot, like there's always this next thing that we got to do, there's this next thing, there's this big scary out there, we just kind of burn ourselves out, we get really jaded. And I think it's nice sometimes to just sit in a cool room, smile, maybe chuckle a little bit, and it primes us for the next thing. So again, just setting those proper expectations. If you're looking for this to be purely educational, aha, I got you. The doors are on both sides, but I would love to have you. <laughs> so. Uh, for, and this is the primer, again, for those of you that do want to leave at any given point, the main points we're going to be talking about are AI doesn't have to be scary. It is scary, and I think a lot of that just comes from us not being super comfortable with it yet, which is okay because it's pretty new, right? ChatGPT has really only been GA for, well, like 18 months, if that, right? That's, that's not a long time, but I think the more time that we spend understanding the technology, what it does, how we're going to use it, the scares go away, we can do our jobs a little bit better from that point. There is no one right way to handle AI VRM. There's too many acronyms, guys. <laughs> but there are some not great ways, and that's kind of what we're gonna be hitting on. All right, we want to at least not make mistakes that we know we can avoid, and then as we get into the unknown, we can say, hey, this works even better. Um, also, I'm a big believer in GRC, right? I, I, I shouldn't say right. You guys know me. This is my first time being you all, and I, I, I love being here. This is a great place. Um, I'm a big fan of GRC, and GRC more is a skill as opposed to a function that's separate from a bunch of other stuff. So GRC comes in order for a reason, and it helps to avoid the code a bunch of cool stuff and hope that it doesn't get hacked because security, right? Um, we do these things for a reason. We have to think about what we're doing, why we're going to do, how it's going to help the mission, and then how we do it in a way that's not going to blow up in our face, essentially. Um, and we do it so we avoid this kind of stuff, right? A lot of people are scared of this. I regularly have nightmares of this, maybe not specifically Terminator, but I don't love the idea of machines thinking for themselves. I'm coming over to the other side of it and realizing, and part of why I'm giving this pitch now is because AI is just software and hardware, right? It's technology, and as we come to understand it, we realize that, yes, this is a great, I, I guess you could say, arguably, a great set of movies, but that's what it is, right? This is something in the world that we have to deal with. And again, before people start leaving, um, I, I think the take home for this is as you develop a way to handle ARS in your company and for the vendors that you choose to bring into your environment, think about the why. This is a fancy, fun, um, nostalgic way of thinking about, okay, before we do this, should we? All right, so Jurassic Park rule. I like to throw this out a lot, as much as I can. So before you do something, I, I would recommend, I guess this is where I can give some good advice, is before you do something, think about why. Think about, is this really necessary? And it, I, I, I think that this will help solve a lot of the problems that you run into as we, as a collective industry, as a collective set of professionals start figuring out, okay, this just doesn't work when we're have le having legal discussions around how we're gonna protect ourselves from our vendors using AI, and we can just get away from some of these worst practices. So, let's get into it. After that long diatribe, um, what is AI risk, right? Uh, essentially, I think it'd be boiled down to the, the risk of using AI, right? And that's how we use it, right? Do we allow our employees to use ChatGPT? Are we gonna integrate, um, what is that? Anthropics Claude into our product, right? That's something I know a lot of people were doing, especially last year. All right, RSA, Black Hat, that was the talk of pretty much every conference. And that's kind of it, right? I don't think there's really a need to overcomplicate it. And I think having that proper framing and making sure that we're not going to, but, but, what if? Expanding that, right? Let's put a good, decent, workable scope around it. But really, is that really helpful? I'd like to think it is, but if it's not right, uh, I think if you were to Google anything about AI risk, you're gonna see a lot of articles that bring up these sweet, pretty infographs with lots of colors, lots of numbers and figures, things that we love, and are just like the absolute fruit of, 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 of board discussions, right? Like these are things that we wanna distill and show our management. And I'm gonna say, perhaps a little controversially, that these are really not helpful at all. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not saying these are bad or that 
that there is no value in them. But from us as a practitioner standpoint, I don't see a ton of value in this because it doesn't tell me, okay, how, how, how is the introduction of AI really going to hurt my organization or, or present threats, right? Right. If you're looking at the top one, we can see, oh, well, it feels DDoS. Like, that DDoS was around before AI, right? A lot of these things have been around for a long time. I mean, I hope so, right? Either that or I'm just speaking nonsense. So I, I'd argue that there is no good way yet, not saying that there isn't a way to do it, but as of right now, there's not really a good way to sum up, okay, what does, what risks do AI present to us overall, right? at least not discreetly from the rest of technology, right? When we think about how we manage risk, a lot of it is, it's not different from any other software, right? And it's understanding the technology, understanding how this impacts our organization that's really going to help us understand what needs to be done and then the next steps that we take to mitigate said risk. And right, I mentioned it before, as we understand what AI really does, how it works, right? And especially when you get into the concept of training, right? That's that's the big scares that I've been running into and having to explain and give good assurance on is we don't train our AI. Wistic has been integrating AI into our product. We don't train AI on your data. We have multiple levels of agreements that says you may not train using any of the data that we send you, right? And I think once, we're ab once we were able to demonstrate that, we had a lot less scares from our customers. I'm not saying that it, it inherently closed better deals from that perspective, right? This isn't a sales conference. But, right, talking from one security professional to another, that was a big point of assurance, right? And that, that's something new, right? When we think about regular software, regular SaaS, right, we don't really talk about data ownership because we've gotten to the point to where it's just kind of generally accepted that you own your data. So we've just kind of come full circle where we have to come to that same general bucket of terms where we understand, okay, Either we own our data or we don't, for example. So, uh, and right, and what I'm, a reiteration of what I meant by full circle, right? Like, you get, a lot of you will probably remember what the internet did to the world, right? I don't remember when we started using the term app. I mean, we don't usually, right? We say, oh, you go to this website, right? But it's a web app. And I remember there being a lot of scrutiny. Well, I grew up in a small farm town in California. I mean, California, not Silicon Valley, but I mean, like, my high school was half a farm. Um, and, and the internet was a scary thing. So it, 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 it was a very big transition from being able to understand, okay, I can go and check my school schedule, for example, right? Or I can see, I can go get my teacher's email from that, so I can send email through Google. That's pretty sweet. And then, right, think about the cloud, right? People still refer to the cloud as some mystical, magical thing where if you have your app host in the, in the cloud, it's secure. Right? We're good, we're hosting in the cloud. How many of you have heard that? Please, I, I want some interaction. Thank you! Sweet. Um, everyone else, please, N this is nap time. This is prime nap time. And how, ridic and, and, and how ridiculous is that though, right? Not the, not the nap thing, the cloud thing, right? The, it, I'm telling you guys, it's, it's That's just that time of day. For. What was that? That's what caffeine's for, for the nap. Thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> but. I, and that's where I'm trying to reiterate, like, the fact that there's still the perception of we're in the cloud we're set, right, is, 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 I think, kind of where we're at with AI right now. Just because we're using AI doesn't mean that things are going to be correct, that the integrity is still intact, or that insert security or reliability or risk problem here, right? We're just using another facet of technology, and if we rely on it, as is given to us, we're gonna run into some problems. It's worth our time as professionals to understand what's being done, how it's happening, so that we can give recommendations as needed, right? I mean, same thing, you guys remember when smartphones came out first? How wild that was? I remember distinctly sitting around seeing the first iPhone commercial and thinking, why would anyone need a computer in your pocket? And when was the last time you left house without your phone, right? I think we're gonna get there one day, but I think that's gonna come at after we put in the effort to really understand and grasp how this is gonna work. So, um, moving on from AI risk, what is vendor risk? I'm gonna spend less time here because I can feel it. All of you and your souls projecting and radi radiating up front how fun it is to deal with questionnaires, both asking for them and having to fill them out. Um, I gave a talk a couple of years ago to, at a local 
event up in Utah Valley called Saint Con about VRM 101. This is VRM 201. So this is this is kind of a fun continuation, right? We're, we're, we're essentially looking. Okay, when I introduce external influences, how is this going to impact me? And when we smash them together, we essentially want to see how AI being used by our vendors is going to impact us. And again, that's kind of it, right? We can always expand the scope, but let's start at a workable place. So, and the reason that I keep coming back to this really repetitive, really grading concept of, hey, let's put this scope on here is I've spoken with management. It is an ongoing discussion within some teams and some other stakeholders that, well, we need to really understand what is what are the future implications like if we keep thinking what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, without understanding the basics and saying, look, we know at least for sure with this, we're gonna, we're never gonna reach a, a common point of understanding. And if that's something you run into, this is something that I recommend doing. It's, all right, if we're really concerned about how our vendors are using AI, what do we mean by that? Do we mean, do we care whether or not that our, that our email provider lets their employees use ChatGPT? Probably not but we wanna see that they know how to properly govern themselves regarding that risk. So, what AI risk is not, I, and this is, I don't know why I did point by point, but whew, this is probably the changes that I was doing at two o'clock earlier this morning. You can, you can tell where that comes from. Uh, a, a lot of the questions that I've had come in in the form of questionnaires and customer calls and contracts, and this is, I think, just a byproduct of, like I've been saying, AI being such a new technology integrated in, 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 in business is, hey, how do you train the model? Like, we don't develop our own model, so we don't train it kind of deal. Um, but then also access to data, right? That from a fair point of view, you do want to know how, okay, how is the AI doing, the, the AI, how is it doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? How does it know what to do with my data? And that's where you get into the product level discussion. But in terms of, okay, how are we preventing Skynet from being built? It's, that's great. You're gonna have to go ask Anthropic or OpenAI, right? That's, that's something that from a product level, unless you're building your own model, which I think would be really cool and I know does happen sometimes. This is where, again, small print, this is where I think we need to put a good set of boundaries on it. It's not that it's not important. I will never say that questions like this aren't important. But putting the scope on, okay, in the context of our relationship from me buying your service or you buying mine, right, if you're integrating AI into yours, you need to be able to say, okay, what is your concern? And in and, and, and the most polite, professional way, say, how is this relevant to our discussion, right? If, if you let things spiral, they will spiral. And that happens with all new and emerging technology, right? The whole example of the cloud, how often was that happening before? Or you're in the cloud, okay, that means either you're super secure, which is wrong, or you're super duper insecure, which is not super wrong, but, right? And, 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 and things have changed, right? There's been a lot of changes. For example, AWS S3, you guys remember just a few years ago, everything came public by default and you had to lock it down. That's not the case anymore. And it's gonna be the same thing with AI eventually as well, where, it's very clear who has ownership, how that's impacted, and so on. But until then, we have to get good at having the discussion saying, I'm happy to get this information for you. Also, how relevant is that to you understanding how this is going to impact your actual risk, right? Are you looking for, sorry, was I in? Oh, no, no, you're good. Sorry, I, sorry, I, I, I told you. Eyes, ears, they don't work that, that good, but I do, I do want the thoughts and opinions. So if you're waving your hand and want to say something, I don't see you or say something, just shout, hey, you, and, and, and we'll go with it. So again, to reiterate, like there's, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but if you're only focusing on the minutia, the super technical minutia, it's not that that's bad, but you might want to ask yourself, how valuable is this in actually mitigating the risk that we have with this particular vendor, right? So, um, it's it's like it's software, right? I was saying before, and I know that's overly reductive, but right. How many of you are familiar with Little Bobby Tables, KXCD, right? They have a new one, and guess what? There's like two minor changes, right? The same script, I guess, arguably better art, right? But it's all about oh, you you named your kid something SQL injection, and then. 
you, you should have sanitized your inputs, right? And and I thought I was going to get more chuckles, honestly. <laughs> but 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 I mean, what hit me hardest about this was: look, this is this is it. This really is it. There's not been a lot of change, right? Did you change? Do you sanitize and validate your inputs? It was like that before we had the internet. Then the internet was a big thing, and then it was still: are you sanitizing your inputs? Now we're into AI, generative AI, all these different models, and we have the same problem, right? It's it, it's. I, and I think that's where a lot of the scariest go was, hey, look, like how we do it is a little different. But if you're thinking conceptually from a risk mitigation standpoint, is the technology doing only what I think it should be doing, whether it be you as a developer or you as a consumer, are you confident that it's only doing what it should be doing or it's close to only, right? Because nothing's ever 100% risk free. But having that confidence and understanding that paradigm of look, like it's technically new technology, but it's all based on stuff that we've been using for a long time. It takes away the scaries, right? We just want to peel back those layers and see it for what it is. Um, I couldn't come up with a funny, cuter name of saying this. So these are some no-nos that I, I've kind of experienced in handling AI VRM is essentially the pitfalls, right? I should have said pitfalls, but these are no-nos. Um, unofficial no-nos, remember, I'm not giving advice. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, thank goodness. Um, the, the, there's a lot of discussion about denying the use of vendors purely because they allow AI somewhere in their environment or their product. Not saying that you can't because there's some legitimate purposes in which that might be reasonable. There's also some that will only use a vendor because they use AI, which I think equally comes with some issues to maybe reflect on, right? It's, it's, it's like saying, hey, are you cloud-based, right? regardless of what your environment is like, that, that, that doesn't affect a ton. It doesn't affect nothing, right? Because if you have an on-prem solution versus a hosted solution, right, you have to do the, you have to do the upkeep. But I, I don't think those reasons in and of itself are a reason to either use or not use something, right? There's also treating all AI usage as the same, right? So when we first started integrating AI into our product, we jumped in with the uh, OpenAI API. And a lot of people are freaking out. I was like, they just got breached. Like, nope, that was ChatGPT, which is a different platform. I understand the concern. All right. Uh, and then also, this is just kind of a pet peeve of mine because uh, one of our products that we use is kind of like trust center type stuff, um, where I say, here is hundreds of hours of work that I put into completing these questionnaires, compiling our policies, all our SOC 2, all our certifications and stuff. Here you go. That's nice. We want you to fill out our custom questionnaire. Someone's experience that I heard someone laugh about that. <laughs> um, and, 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 and what I mean by that is I know it's hard to validate, but I think it's a good place to start, right? When you look at Anthropic, when you look at OpenAI and all the other folks that are doing that and you're looking at using them, take a look at the security stuff. They prepare that for a reason. And that's specifically the reason they create that and give it to you. And it's the same thing with your vendors, right? Hopefully, rather, uh, your, your vendors that have AI in their products have taken the time to create documentation say, this is how we use it. This is what we want you to feel comfortable doing. If there's holes, absolutely ask. Say, oh, well, I don't see any mention about ownership or about deletion or about training. Ask about that, absolutely. I think it would also be a disservice to both you and your vendor to not ask first. Ask and then read if you're given something. So. Even worse, VRM, yes, yeses. Maybe some recommendations from some experience, from just a little bit of experience now, right? Don't, I, I'd rec essentially recommend not getting too hung up on, oh, well, it's the AI, it's scary, right? You want to understand the whole ecosystem because there's a lot of service providers, a lot of software that have AI as an option. That's something that um, at, at my company, we built in AI-powered features as an option, and you have the full realm of functionality and being able to do what you want to do both from a buyer as a buyer and a seller from a VRM perspective without a drop of AI, without one byte going to or from our uh, um, the model, right? So should you assess the capabilities? Absolutely. How they're securing it? For sure. But there's a whole underlying set of technologies that's going on there and it would be short-sighted to fix it only on the AI, right? Um, and, and, and right, we're looking at risk, right? We're, we're security professionals, we are security professionals, but like I was saying at the, at the beginning, I'm a big GRC fan as a skill set, 
as opposed to a, a as an isolated function, we are also risk professionals, right? We are good, we as security professionals are good at understanding how technology works and how to secure it because it mitigates risk. So understanding how that fits into the big picture is going to drive a lot of good conversation and then help make this more efficient as you go on. Oh, and also, if you got really important stuff going on, get it in the contract, right? <laughs> if, if, if it's not in the contract, if it's not in the signed contract, it doesn't exist. So if there's an option to say, I don't want my data to be used in training, whatever the underlying model is, get that in writing and then you're good to go. Um, at the very least, right, if something shady is done, you have recourse, right? Again, we're risk professionals. We're security, but we're also risk professionals. That's how we handle this type, particular type of risk. <sighs> Forgot to breathe for a minute there, y'all. Um, some great learning resources. Again, I told you I'm not going to sell too hard, um, but I do believe in what we're doing at Wistic. Um, we have great relationships with other organizations that are out there to make this process more efficient, less painful. Um, and, and just overall looking to make things better. The TPRA is how I know them. Third Party Risk Association does fantastic stuff. A lot of other ones too, right? So when you think about the CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance, the Vendor Security Alliance, they have resources too, that's awesome. NIST, right? Who doesn't know and love NIST? They came out with the AI Risk Management Framework, open source. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have a QR code to these slides later, please feel free to link it because any of these underlying underlined the fun things, fun resources are linked. So you don't have to Google it. I saved you two seconds. You're welcome. Um, there's also a couple of ISO standards out there, 23503 for um, implementation guidance, I think is the technical term, right? It's kind of the ISO 27002 to the uh, ISO 42001, which is an actual certification that can come out. It's still new but I'm also a believer in first movement and advantage. So if you want to go look at how that's going to impact you, even if you don't certify, this is going to be a good way to kind of get your chops wet and learn how that's going to drive adoption of AI in, in the ecosystem later. What was the name of the cert again? Uh, ISO 230, 23053 and 42001. Yeah, so the, the latter, the 42001 is the one that you actually certify to. Um, also, I'm, I'm, I'm not a paid rep or anything, but Walter Haydock on LinkedIn, if you've not seen him, has a bunch of great stuff, not just AI related, but more recently his company, Stackware, has some fantastic stuff. Um, I'm not saying that he is the authority, but I, I, I like his stuff. I learn a lot from him pretty regularly, so I'd recommend him. Uh, go follow him, ask him questions. He's got a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, the QR code and that underlying link is a top, a top, an article that he published recently, I think is a great primer, all right? Um, NIST RMF's been out a little while, but AI RMF, so I, I think I mistyped that. But at any rate, great stuff, great resources, and it comes out regularly. So uh, I double linked a lot of these, that's my bad. So ignore the left half. Uh, there's also some great new legislation. Some of you love that. I'm not particularly a big fan, but like any other law-abiding citizen, it doesn't matter whether I like it or not, if we have to be compliant, we're going to be compliant. So some example legislation is coming out of the EU, right, like it tends to do, um, GDPR, everyone's favorite thing, driving a bunch of privacy legislation here is likely also going to be a precursor here for the EU AI Act. Um, it has been adopted and is slowly going to be rolled out, I think, over the next three and a half years. And they have given a tool to help people get ready, go them, uh, called the CAP AI assessment, which essentially helps you determine whether or not you are ethically, efficiently, and securely developing and implementing AI systems. I'm not a salesman. I just realized that sounded very markety, and that's that's not me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, in summary, because I got like 20 seconds, is AI is just software. It doesn't have to be scary as long as you're willing to put in a little bit of time to try it out, practice, learn about it, and how it works, and the scaries go away. Um, therefore, because AI is technically just software, right, the same basics apply. Good old Bobby tables, dro Bobby drop all the tables, it, it, it's, it, it, it again goes a long way, right? If you understand how it works, you can apply the same basics. And really, right, you, I'm not saying you have to use AI or that you have to avoid it all, right? There's going to be an in-between. So decide what you need to do, then go fix some of the problems that come with that. Um, I think I was just in a Jurassic Park Jeff Goldblum mood, so 
You're welcome, everybody. And uh, like I promised, slide deck over here. Here's my LinkedIn if you want it. And I'm sure you're going to figure this out. I believe in you. You're all amazing. It is a pleasure standing and talking here with you. And I, 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 I'm sure you'll figure it out, like Ron Swanson said. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, sir. I think for a lot of companies, especially small companies, um, co pilot and other similar systems are already starting to become like super useful. Mm -hmm. uh, but I worry that we don't have policy on the books on what you could be putting into the chat, GPT or, or co pilot, mm -hmm. or helping you know write papers or other things like that. So right now, we are not implementing at the corporate level. Mm -hmm. um, but people are still using it on the side for things. Mm -hmm. So are there draft corporate policies out there for governance and for like, hey, don't put this into it, but you can put that? I think there is. Um, I wish I could tell you where. I, I Honestly, I think, Walt, like I was saying before, I'm sorry, I'll go back to that in a sec, folks. I think Walter Haydock might have a couple of stock templates, but what he would probably say if you talk with him and what I'll also say is the chances are very good that um, there's never going to be a stock policy as good as one that you draft yourself. Sure. Be because right, only you know what you need, what, you, what, what your environment can't tolerate. Um, but in essence, right, you have the purpose for using a type of technology, in this case, something like Copilot. We have something called, I think, it's because Copilot is technically generative AI, we have a generative AI acceptable use policy. Um, if you message me on LinkedIn, I can actually get you a sample of that. I just try to connect you, so. Perfect. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, because, you know, trying to get a handle on some of the back end, like just basic policies for AI, there's nothing out there to look at. Mm -hmm. Mm. Chat GPT can write you one. Yeah, <laughs> like Mrs. Over here said, yeah, Chat GPT can write you one. <laughs> now, whether you want it to or not, <laughs> exactly. Uh, ultimately, right, um, like any effective policy is a making sure it says you must or must not, and then making sure that those it applies to are very well aware of what their boundaries are and what happens if they don't. And then, right, we're getting deeper into the governance bit with enforcement and all that. So, um, but ultimately, I think if you can put pen to paper and say this is exactly the line with which we're not okay with you doing whatever anymore, that's a great place to start. Work backwards and say these are the things you can do. Yeah. So, but happy to have a longer conversation about that for sure. Yeah. Well, I was just going to jump off of that. You take all these like the same acceptable use policy, the same confidentiality policy we just established. It is about sharing. If you think of AI as a third party vendor. You, you definitely can, right? I, I think that you run into some caveats when you think about use case, right? But I think that's where, it, it, again, it's very individual, right? Like if we don't share any data with any third policies, and that includes cloud providers, right? So if us host, being hosted in the cloud, we can't share that, that becomes a problem because we're not on-prem. But, right, there's there's definitely ways around that. It just sometimes comes with re-architecting policy. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, your slide deck doesn't have uh, access. It, it doesn't allow you to request it. I mean, you can request it, but it's not. Oh, but it's not automatic for the read access. Hang on. for the view access. Gotcha. I'm. I'm. Oh. Oh. Yes. Hang on. I think I'm. I think I'm on hotspot. Um. In the meantime, I'll look at that right now. Um. Did you have yeah. Um, if third party vendors have a partnership with um, with a company such as OpenAI to keep the data private, so they probably change their prices. Have you cut their um, because they have to pay more for the partnership? Have you encountered that? Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I think I might have missed part. Can you say that again? So, in order to keep your data within your company, mm -hmm. you have to. Typically, I have a partnership with the company that's providing the generative AI tool. Again, to you know, have a, a price version of it. In which case, you might have to increase your prices. Possibly, yeah. So, so the, the the heart of the of, of the question of the comment is essentially, 
have is there a difference in, in in pricing because of a supplemental agreement that comes with saying hey don't use my data right. um i th i think that kind of depends on the business it's probably going to be the more probable outcome um i know it kind of was with us because we sell our ai feature separately uh but we oh, okay. but we did enter but that's not always the case right yeah. um there is something with specifically OpenAI, and I know every other provider has it called an enterprise agreement that essentially says, because we are a business, we insist that you not. And that usually becomes with, okay, that means you have to pay at least as much a month instead of the usage costs, right? Where it's just pay as you go. So it's possible, but again, I think that's kind of like a case by case where we're in, right? Like, so for, for example, Slack or Zoom, they've kind of integrated AI features at a more general level. That might not be the case because you would, well, rather, that would probably more definitely be the case because as a non-paying user, right, for users, you can use those for free, um, they process your data and send it for training, which generally means that's how you pay for it. Yeah, yeah, but great thought, great question. It's, I'm sorry, I wish I could give something better than it depends, but. That's just wondering. Yeah, so, yeah, I've seen it both ways. Yeah. Um, access requests, there we go. Um, for everyone that's saying hey, uh, that's requesting access to the slides, I'm going to slowly work through that and changing it so you can just publicly view it. Sorry. Thank you very much. Any other questions before I step off and let something more interesting happen? Thanks for the giggles. You're most welcome. Oh, no, I think he answered. I was going to. How many people in here are managing their third parties? Okay. <laughs> Internal risk. Who, who does that? <laughs> yep. Um, thank you all so much. I, so, like I said, I'm from out of town. I haven't been in San Antonio for 15 years, and this is just one of the most fun conferences I've been at, and it's because of you guys. Thank you.